Welcome to the Real Estate Guys radio program. I'm your host, Robert Helms. What's one of the best ways to invest in real estate that mitigates the downside and preserves lots of upside? Well, it may be something you haven't thought of. We're going to talk about it today, and we've got an awesome guest on the Real Estate Guys radio program. Are you achieving everything you want in life? What if there was a time-tested way for you to get all you've dreamed of? The most successful people in life set goals and keep themselves accountable. But how? The good news is that it's not rocket science. You too can learn the skills and unleash the motivation that will create success in your life. And now is the time. Hi, this is Robert Helms, and I'd like to personally invite you to attend Create Your Future, the 2022 Goals Retreat, January 7th to 9th in beautiful Lake Las Vegas, Nevada. This unique weekend event has been called phenomenal, inspirational, and life-changing by the thousands of people that have attended. Hear from some of them and find out more at realestateguysradio.com under events or call 888-489-7723, extension 18, to preserve your spot. Get your life back on track physically, spiritually, and financially. Attend the live in-person 2022 Goals Retreat on the second weekend of the new year. Click events at realestateguysradio.com to register. This is no dress rehearsal. Live the life you were meant to. Visit realestateguysradio.com or call 888-489-7723, extension 18, today. Welcome to the Real Estate Guys radio program. I'm your host, Robert Helms. With me, as usual, it is our financial strategist and co-host, Russell Gray. Hey, Robert. We have been traveling the globe this summer, uh, looking at real estate, all kinds of great real estate, and there's so many different ways uh, to approach real estate investing. And of course, what's on everyone's mind now is the cost to do. It's expensive to buy lumber and copper and, and workmanship and all those things. And so we're seeing this escalation in price. It's been happening for a while. Is it inflation? Is it transitory? And where can an investor play? And I think we've got an idea today, a strategy that can make a ton of sense given everything that's going on. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think there's a couple things going on that people are concerned about. I follow the news religiously, as most people know, and I hear so much about inflation. And I think both inflation and stagflation are things that are real. And we've been saying since 2008, the importance of buying things that are real and essential. And there aren't too many things out there that are as real and essential as housing, especially affordable housing in great markets. The question is, uh, how do you do that? And are you buying into a bubble? When you see the National Association of Realtors uh, chief economist, Lawrence Yoon, coming out and talking about the inventory problem and all the agents talking about the inventory problem and the idea that investors are coming in and buying up the inventory and driving the price up and pricing out the home buyers out there who are trying to get started. And the question is, is it speculation? Are we investing into a bubble or are there sound fundamentals underneath that are driving the price? And that's always the due diligence, the understanding that a prudent investor has to understand. Is this price action speculation driven by people who are hoping to flip out for a quick profit or are the people who are coming into the space looking for long-term production of income and do they feel like the pricing and the leverage, the, the mortgages underneath uh, all make sense at this particular point in time? So we're going to explore that today. I have my own opinion, but I'm excited to hear what our guest has to say. Well, we often talk about real estate as an investment is long-term. If you buy a house and fix it up and sell it for a profit in three months, we call that flipping. That's a great way to make some money. That can be a cool business. It's not real estate investing. It's a job. I'm turning a cash to an asset back to cash and hopefully making a profit. Nothing wrong with that. We have listeners that do that. We've done a little bit of that. But a long-term real estate investor puts his or her money at work, at risk, in order to make a long-term return. And so at any time, pre-COVID, we would look at a market and have to determine, does this market make sense from a sustainable driver point of view? Are there lots of reasons people are coming here? Do we have net positive migration? Are people getting new jobs? What kinds of industries and where do those people live? And the perfect equation is to find a market that hasn't made a big run up yet, but that has good long-term jobs and industries, multiple drivers. If that works and if there's the type of people coming there that need places to rent more than people need places to buy, then that works great for long-term real estate investors. Now COVID comes along and first of all, shuts down the economy. 
So lots of people are out of work. Then there's the eviction moratoriums. You can't evict these non-paying tenants. Ouch, that hurts landlords more than everybody else. And then we're going to flood the world. And it starts with the U.S., but you know how it works with dollars. They go everywhere. We're going to flood the world with dollars, which is going to naturally create inflation, whether we admit it or not. We had Dr. Doug Duncan, the chief economist for Fannie Mae at our Investor Summit. Our guest today was actually with us on the summit as well. And we had a big discussion about inflation and how much of it, if any, is transitory, temporary, just because of what's happened versus long term. And this is why this is so critical. If now post-COVID I'm looking at a market, do people still need places to live? Yes. Do people still need jobs? Yes. Do the right people with the right jobs rent from us? Yes. But we have to be even more careful so that, as you say, Russ, we're not buying into a bubble. Absolutely. And again, real estate, you know, when you read about it in the news, they look at it or they try to look at it as an asset class. They First of all, they only talk about housing. And of course, we are talking about housing. But they look at it on a national basis. They look at it on a bunch of averages and medians and things that are you throw the entire nation, every market, every submarket into a giant blender and come up with something that doesn't match anything that's really out there in your local market. So it's really not a valid way to look at it, but it is the only way paper asset people know to think because they deal in assets, quote unquote assets, that are essentially commodities that are priced exactly the same everywhere in every market all over the world. But real estate absolutely positive is not that way. So first of all, you have to pick a jurisdiction that you really like at a, at a macro level. Well, for all our faults in the United States of America, we still have the best property rights. We still have the best rule of law. We still have one of the most robust economies. And most of the people around the world would consider United States real estate a relatively safe haven. Of course, within the United States, we have the, all the different states, which is a sub-jurisdiction. And there are seven states that have no state income tax. Obviously, in an environment where inflation is destroying real wages and pushing on profits, especially in an environment where there are threats of raising corporate taxes, businesses and people are going to seek shelter probably in one of those seven states, all other things being equal. Then you add to that the baby boomer demographic and the natural migration away from high tax states to warmer low tax states. And it's no secret that some of the southern states have been the recipients of that type of migration for a long time. But the boomers are right there. Then you add to that the shutdowns and what everybody learned in 2020. Hey, I don't have to go to the office. I don't have to live in Manhattan to do my job. I can live someplace warm, someplace nice, someplace affordable with less tax. I might even be able to afford a cut and pay and still have an increase in lifestyle. That's a win-win. So we've seen some of that. And then you have to look at places where there's actually the foundation, the infrastructure of basic essentials of economy. Is, you know, So it begins to narrow it a little bit. Now, we've been in love with Florida for quite some time. Texas, Florida are two of my, our favorite states, both no income tax states, both super business friendly states. Both have been relatively uh, liberal in terms of opening up their economies and keeping things moving. Now, you may or may not agree with that from a pandemic perspective, but from an economic perspective, it's proven to be actually pretty good. And so when people are making economic decisions, and this is an investment talk show, uh, those are the types of things they're going to be looking at. And the migration patterns show that to be true. Well, within Florida, there are actually submarkets and Southern Florida is very different than Central Florida, where we think about Orlando and all of that. And then there's Northern Florida. And Northern Florida has been kind of flying under the radar for a little bit, but it landed on ours. And we've been paying attention to it. And then the question is, how do you get into a market where there's no inventory and find inventory that makes sense. And so today we're gonna to try to unpack that puzzle and see if we can find an answer. There's lots of different types of product to invest in. And Russ, you mentioned we're focused on housing and housing is the most robust because everyone needs a roof to sleep under. We've seen big changes in certain retail, things like gyms and movie theaters that were closed completely for months around the country, as well as offices, which you alluded to. Everybody's work habit has changed and the need and demand for office space Base has changed. We've been talking for years about the big change in retail. Retail's not over. It's just different in terms of its real estate use. But housing is housing and there is demand for housing. And if folks can afford what used to be called the American dream to go buy their own home, 
awesome, but more and more, we're a renter nation. And people aren't just renting because they can't afford to buy. People are renting strategically. Maybe they only want to be in a market for a couple of years. And the cost to sell is so high on a property, you know, 8, 10, 12%, that Two years probably isn't enough market gain to make up for that. Now, it would have been the last two years, but in general, you don't want to buy a home if you're only going to be there a couple of years. Other times, people just want to have a more fluid lifestyle. They don't want to be tied down to a geography or tied down to a physicality in a, in a dwelling. Maybe they like apartment living. For whatever the reasons are, we see people who are making the strategic decision to rent. Some of the baby boomers you talked about are deciding, you know what? We don't have to have a lawn to mow and a garden to tend. We can you know, go rent a beautiful apartment and have all the amenities therein. And so we're seeing a big shift. People have rethought their lives because of the pandemic and what may be coming next. And at the same time, real estate continues along. It has always been one of the best investments. Today, we're going to talk particularly about a strategy to invest when you're not sure where the market is that makes sense for lots of reasons. When we come back, you'll meet our good friend Wagner Nolasco today on the Real Estate Guys radio program. Live nationwide, you're listening to The Real Estate Guys. Find out more at realestateguysradio.com. The Real Estate Guys are throwing a party and you're invited. Join us live at the New Orleans Investment Conference, October 19th through 22nd. Now in its 47th year, it's the nation's longest running investment conference and features some of the biggest names in economics and investing, including Jim Rickards, Ron Paul, Danielle DiMartino Booth, Rick Rule, Doug Casey, James Grant, Peter Schiff, and George Gammon. And of course, the Real Estate Guys are speaking again this year. Plus, we're hosting a private hospitality suite one of the evenings with some very special guests. So make plans to join the Real Estate Guys at the New Orleans Investment Conference. With everything going on in the world, no serious investor can afford to miss it. Send an email to neworleans at realestateguysradio.com and we'll get you all the details. That's neworleans at realestateguysradio.com. Hey, ever wished you could go back in time and do some tax planning? Now you can, just like Marty McFly. Lucky for you, a brand new federal law just made this possible with an EQRP to get tax deductions and reduce your taxable income from last year so you can use that tax savings to invest in real estate, Bitcoin, gold, even your own business. Whether you're a full-time investor, doctor, government employee, even if you have five or 50 employees, the EQRP works and is your secret weapon and now it's retroactive. Hey, I'm Damian Lupo and we have your solution. By the way, if you got bad advice and used an IRA for an apartment syndication, you are sitting on a U-bit time bomb. But don't worry, there's a solution, the EQRP. The EQRP company is ready to help you get control of your money, kill U-bit, and help you pay way less taxes. Want to learn more about this strategy? Send an email to EQRP at realestateguysradio.com for my special EQRP report. Paying tax or letting Wall Street suck you dry is dumb. Your first step is freeing your retirement money by sending an email to EQRP at realestateguysradio.com today. Hi, this is Mauricio Raul, the founder and CEO of Mir Law Group, and you're listening to The Real Estate Guys. Welcome back to The Real Estate Guys radio program, now in our 25th year of broadcast. We're talking today about the ever-changing landscape and what's an investor to do, especially as it comes to housing. And our guest knows a thing or two about that because he builds a lot of homes. Let's say hello to our friend Wagner Nolasco. Hey, Wagner. Hi, good morning, guys. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Well, it's great to see you. It was great to have you at the summit. That was a mind-blowing event changed my life completely changed my life i already uh, purchased uh, uh for me and my wife to be there next year and i gave her a year's notice in advance so she can prepare so there's no excuses not to be there next year <laughs> excellent love that well hey uh what you do is fascinating because you're a builder and developer and you could be out there building houses and selling them at these inflated rates and making all kinds of money and, and what you really do is you focus instead on investors something we call build to rent. And the idea here is that as a builder, you're not building it to sell on the open market to a homeowner. You're building it with a tenant in mind. Can you tell us what that's all about? 
So Build Your Rent came to life when actually a personal need of inventory was actually coming up for myself. And I had a lot of aging properties. Uh, and one of the things that I hate is called capital expenditure or CapEx. So as house, houses get older, they actually tend to break. Things tend to not work as properly anymore. And you're making all this beautiful cash flow, at least you think you are. And then you have to replace a new air conditioning, put up a new roof, or you have an electrical problem that you have to address. So with that in mind, not having any more inventory of available to purchase you know at the at the doorsteps or at the footsteps at the courthouses for for foreclosures it's cheaper today to build than actually to buy existing inventory so that's what we did we partner up uh, a group of developers and we started buying land about six years ago and now we have over three thousand lots combined three thousand doors in different stages of construction you know i heard somebody say one day god stopped making land a while ago so, you know, whatever it's there, it's there. So we start acquiring a lot of land and we got really lucky in the process because today land is extremely expensive and we wouldn't be able to deliver property at the same price we are if we would have to purchase the same inventory of lots today. The biggest thing for me, uh, Robert, as far as tenant resilient, uh, built to rent construction is really builder direct, meaning we buy in bulk, we build in bulk, we pass on the savings. I have a list of 10 items that I would like to discuss with you guys along the show today why build your rent makes a lot of sense especially uh to let them uh, the listeners know there's no bubble there's no bubble in the market entry-level homes are really a necessity for human beings we work for the base of the pyramid and i want to show you guys why and how well that's awesome because people do look at the cost to buy a 40 year old house today and you bring up a, a huge point before we get to the 10 points which is the well-kept sinister secret of buying long-term buy and hold is that it looks great on paper. This thing looks like it's going to give me a 15% cash on cash return. And it does right up until I have to replace the roof or the air conditioner, as you mentioned, replace all the windows. And all of a sudden, all that cash flow that I'd been putting aside for a year and a half is gone in one chunk. And that's the reality of 40 and 50 and 60 year houses. It's just how it is. Having owned lots of those, I can attest to that fact. And I'm guessing most of our listeners who have done that are nodding their heads. So when you can buy something new, it makes sense for a ton of reasons. Builder home warranty, it's the latest style. But beyond that, what you guys do is you critically engineer the property to be tenant resilient. Let's talk about that for a minute. That is correct. So by personal experience and also a lot of feedback from our investors is we have just changed the way we build. For example, you go into a national builder today, you have carpet floors. We have waterproof vinyl. We used to have tile. Now we're using waterproof vinyl for maintenance. The grout lines keep giving you more maintenance. So we went into the waterproof vinyl. Formica countertops, we don't use Formica, we use granite countertops or solid surfaces, quartz countertops. And the reason why is they don't burn. So it's easy to maintain. You don't have to replace every two or three years. Uh, the, another thing that we do is we really invest into the kitchen. A lot of stainless steel appliances, women love that. As soon as they come into a, a residence to rent, they look at the master bedroom and bathroom and the kitchen. So if you have a very nice position kitchen, very contemporary cabinetry, LED lighting. Uh, we, we use a Wi-Fi ready garage door opener. We use Wi-Fi thermostats so you can control your house pretty much from anywhere. So we invest a lot, Robert, as well as creating a house that it's tenant ready. The investor does not have to spend another dollar for that tenant to move in. That's really important. And why we did that? Because we buy our own product and I wanted to have the best product available for my tenants and for myself so I don't have to spend any money on capital expenditure once again. Well, it's hard to get your mind around this because most builders by their very nature are trying to value engineer squeeze as much profit out they build houses with carpet because people that live in houses like carpet but the numbers show that when a tenant walks into a brand new house and it's got this beautiful waterproof flooring they love it it looks great it's modern hey if they want carpet they can bring an area rug in that's their problem it's their headache and when it gets full of dog pee it's their problem to deal with and you don't have that issue issue and it makes a ton of sense but it takes this long-term thinking we're talking about you're not a get in and get out guy you're going to do it right spend a little more money and actually sell at a little lesser price and the reason may be obvious but people get lost on this all the time why on earth would wagner sell something he could get more money for and spend less money to build and the answer is you're not looking for an investor to buy one 
your clients tend to buy many. Correct. So a lot of our investors, usually we only work with mid to large size investors, especially people that are looking to syndicate deals. So we are one-stop shop, full service provider for syndicators and mid to large size investors. So a lot of our clients, when they come in, they know that our builders, they make a set margin on a house. They don't keep the equity. So, you know, the equity is actually pass it along to the investor new properties. And maybe we can go into a little of the 10 items that I prepared for you guys today, Robert. Is that okay? Yeah, let's do that. Fantastic. So the first one I would probably touch on is really the cost savings. The builders have a set profit margin they make on a house, meaning they don't have to, you know, take all the meat off the bone. They have to leave meat off the bone for investors. That's number one. Two is high cash flow. Why? Because you have a lower capital expenditure. So you have no surprises, no surprises, higher cash flow. Number three, easy financing. If you go into an existing property, you're going to have a four point inspection, you have wind mitigation, you have a whole bunch of things you have to do to qualify the property for a loan sometimes, especially insurance. We're going to get there as well. But number three, easy financing. New homes usually tend not to give you any issues as far as financing, and you will get the best rates available in the market. Well, that's a really good point, especially when you've got somebody who, like you mentioned, a syndicator, a bulk buyer, someone who already has a big portfolio of property, they're often fannied and freddied out. And what a lender needs in any of these cases is rock solid collateral. And a house that's 45 years old is just going to have issues and challenges where a brand new house isn't. You're absolutely correct. And that is a big difference. This is actually can make it or break it a syndication deal because when they present it, the interest rates can actually make it impossible to, to pan out for the syndicator. Having good inventory, uh, and that lead us into the the next one, which is location, 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 because we build new and we build brand new communities and infill lots, we choose where we're going to build. You're not going to be stuck to buying a house wherever that house was 50, 60 years ago. We go where the jobs are. So that's very, very important. Location, 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 and brand new homes, right? Uh, number five is under warranty, right? You want the warranty. You want it to have a house that is under warranty. If you buy a property that is existing, you're not going to have that warranty. We, in the state of Florida, we'll give you a one year, a turnkey warranty on everything. We call it bumper to bumper, even though a house doesn't have a bumper. <laughs> uh, it, it, it's, a, it's a bumper to bumper warranty on every item. And we are mandated by the state to give you a 10 year structural warranty as well that comes with the property. Okay, so one year everything and 10 years structural. And, and let's face it, the expensive stuff down the road is gonna be the structural. Correct. And then you have all manufacturer's warranty uh, as well. Appliance comes with manufacturer warranty and everything else all the electrical panels, shingles, uh, air conditioning comes with manufacturer's warranty as well. And we're here to help you uh, address any issues later on after that year expires. You can always buy, you know, additional warranty, but we haven't purchased for my personal inventory uh, in portfolio. So uh, I don't think there's a necessity. Well, I think there's one other interesting point, which is if I were to, you know, myself go buy a piece of land and build 10 houses and I could put a third party warranty on, that'd be fine. You guys are in the business. You're in the construction and building business. So not to put words in your mouth, but if there were to be some issue because you're looking for people to buy multiple properties either at once or over time, I'm going to guess you guys are in the best position to take care of it anyway. Our customer satisfaction is our number one priority and making sure they buy a good investment property as well as we wanted to make sure they are happy. Uh, because if not, you know, we are long-term relationship people. So if you don't, you know, if, if we don't make you happy, you're not going to come back and you're going to tell your friends. So your satisfaction Satisfaction is number one priority for us, Robert and Liz. And uh, let's get back to the list. Number six. Number six. New equals longer tenants in your property, meaning they will stand longer, ah. meaning less turnover, less turnover. So once that tenant comes into that house, they take their first shower, they cook their first meal, they have a sense of ownership, they have a sense of entitlement of that house. And that actually is amazing because you know, every time the tenant moves out, you actually need to touch up a little bit on the paint and clear the home. So having long lasting tenants that are great and well qualified is huge. So that's number six. New homes will get you longer lasting tenants, less turnover. Number seven, lower insurance rates. Everybody's worried about, you know, how much are you going to have as far as positive cash flow left over? It's not how much you make, it's how much you keep. Yep. In Florida, we have seen that new homes 
tend to be 66% less expensive on insurance than an existing property. Wow. Why? Because we are built up to code, meaning we respect cities, counties, and state codes that are up to date on 2021. That means less insurance uh, worries for them to cover, and we are, uh, comply with everything. So lower insurance rates, that's going to be number seven for us. Number eight, the builder already have a set uh, margin that they're going to be making, uh, as well as built-in equity. So you will be ripping the benefit of the built-in equity. The builder will only make whatever he needs to make to, to turn that deal over to the investor and built-in equity. Everything we have and we sell comes with built-in equity, positive cash flow, and appreciation. We can guarantee appreciation, but of course, we have seen amazing numbers that I'm going to share with you guys before the end of the show today as well in our areas that where we, we do business. Awesome. Number nine, uh, as I told you guys, better tenants. Our houses tend to be in better locations, Better new homes attract better tenants, more well-qualified. A lot of our tenants today are in the uh, technology business industry. A lot of them are in the uh, aerospace industry. You know, Elon Musk uh, is here in Florida. Jeff Bezos is here. Sir Richard Branson is here in Florida. So we just follow the, 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 the leaders, right? And I usually tell all of my investors, you know, follow Bezos, not Bozos. I love that. So just make sure that when you guys look for look up for somebody to follow, you follow somebody that is the real deal. And those guys are just transforming the state of Florida. So new homes in better places equals better tenants. I yeah. think that covers the number 10 for us, Robert. I also wanted to share some of the appreciation and numbers that we have here in Florida as well. So Ocala, I know you guys are doing a tour with another provider, which is a good friend of mine. And uh, I can share some of my personal numbers in Ocala for my personal investments. About 14 months ago, I was selling a three bedroom, two bathroom, about 1400 square feet, two car garage in Ocala for about $139,000. Okay. Today, I'm selling that same house for $195,000 thousand dollars and it's appraising at two hundred and nine thousand dollars and we are in august 2021 rents what happened to rents in this past 14 months uh rents were about thirteen hundred dollars today we're charging 1525 to 1550 so uh the appreciation has been over 39.56 percent if you do cash on cash robert we're looking at 157 percent appreciation on your capital that you have invested. So the markets in Florida are absolutely on fire. The only way to get a property is to people that have a relationship like you guys, because it's impossible to get good inventory at a good cash flow in a good location if you don't have the relationships. Well, this is a huge challenge. And anyone that's been out there looking for property is understanding inventory is a challenge. We'll talk more about that when we come back. Plus, we'll play real estate trivia next. You're tuned to the Real Estate Guys radio program. I'm your host, Robert Helms. Real estate investment advice right in your mailbox. Sign up for the free Real Estate Guys newsletter at realestateguysradio.com. If you love real estate and have always wanted to own your own business, listen up. The Real Estate Guys and their panel of experts want to teach you how to go full-time fast in the real estate syndication business. These next few years may go down in history as one of the best times ever to acquire investment real estate. There are deals everywhere if you know where to look and how to assemble the resources. The Secrets of Successful Syndication Seminar will show you how to make big money doing big deals from a team of experts that have syndicated projects totaling more than $1 billion. Don't wait for someone to give you a raise or create a job for you. Attend the secrets of successful syndication and learn how to build a team, raise capital, find deals, and make full-time money in six months or less. Go to realestateguysradio.com and click on events. All the big players use syndication as a way to diversify risk, optimize profits, and earn big money. You can too. Go to realestateguysradio.com and click on events. For thousands of years of human history, silver has been recognized as money. But then in 1965, the United States took silver out of the financial system. But did silver stop being money? Smart investors don't think so. And ever since, when there are concerns about the quality of the currency, alert investors seek shelter in silver and gold. 
As the size and frequency of major financial crises grow, silver is attracting a lot of attention. To help better understand the what, why, and how of silver, watch the free nine-part series, Making Sense of Silver. Everything you always wanted to know about silver but didn't know to ask. Featuring 30-year precious metals veteran Dana Samuelson. Send your email request to silverseries at realestateguysradio.com. Whether you own silver now or you're wondering if it's too late, email silverseries at realestateguysradio.com. Hi, I'm Mark Victor Hans. You're listening to The Real Estate Guys. If you want to expand your consciousness, expand your wealth, expand your future, and have more delight and excite in your future than in your past, keep listening to The Real Estate Guys. Welcome back to The Real Estate Guys radio show. Thanks for tuning in. We're so glad you're here. Looking forward to heading off to the 47th annual New Orleans Investment Conference. It's the longest running investment conference in the U.S. We're going to be there. Will you? To get all the details and be invited to our legendary suite party, just send an email to New Orleans at realestateguysradio.com. New Orleans at realestateguysradio.com. We're talking today about build to rent. We've got Wagner and Alaska on the program. Before we get back to that interview, let's play real estate trivia, your chance to win a prize by knowing today's real estate trivia question. In just a minute, I'll give you a question that has something to do with the state of Florida. As soon as you think you know the answer, send your best guess to trivia at realestateguysradio.com. Trivia at realestateguysradio.com. The first person that gets it right is going to win an awesome book called Success Habits of Super Achievers, a collection of awe-inspiring stories that you're going to dig. That'll be yours if you're the first to get the right answer. Last week on the program, we had Jay Papazon, the co-author of The One Thing with Gary Keller. We asked this, where was the very first Keller Williams office located? And anyone who knows Keller Williams knows the answer is Austin, Texas, where the first office opened in 1983. Here's our real estate trivia question for this week. In the United States, Florida, California, and Texas are three of the biggest orange growing locations in the state of Florida. Oranges are available year round, except for two months. Which two? Yeah, which two months or Florida oranges not available? If you know or just want to guess, send your best guess to trivia at realestateguysradio.com. Include your name, the answer to the question, and your mailing address. The first person that gets it right is going to get a copy of Success Habits of Super Achievers. That's today's real estate trivia question. We're talking about buying new when you can and how build to rent makes sense. Our guest is Wagner Nolasco, who we've known many years. Wagner, we've had a chance to get to know uh, you and uh, the product that you put out, and it's all high quality stuff. We get great feedback from our listeners that have, have invested with you. You were just talking about the inventory problem, and this is a huge challenge as we're out there looking for the markets where people can go and find good inventory, everyone's probably used to multiple offers, paying over asking price, going in with no financing contingencies, all the craziness that happens when markets get out of control. And yet there still seems to be room uh, for these markets to run based on inflation and demand. Clearly a lot of demand, and we'll talk about specifically some of your sub-markets before we're done. Um, but let's talk about this inventory issue because you mentioned that you've been buying land now for many, many years. And builders, even the big, you know, nationally known builders, have to make this part of how they operate. You can't finish house number 200 out of 200 houses and go, okay, I guess we should find some more land. You guys constantly have to be adding uh, not only land, but other materials uh, to your repertoire. And yet when prices are going up, how is it that you can deliver a product below the appraisal and still have it make sense? So one of the lucky things for us is instead of being hunted for, for land, we're becoming the hunted now because we pay cash for land. We have great terms. People like to do business with us. We're very straightforward. So we have land deals coming in every day. 
Do we buy them a lot cheaper than the, what the market is offering? No, we don't. But at the end of the day, people do business with people that they like, and they rather actually sign a contract for a little bit of a lower price with us because they know we're going to get to the finish line and close on that land. And that leads up to another opportunity. We're starting to do a lot of multifamily project. We have a lot of land for multifamily. And as the Wall Street Journal very well featured uh, a few weeks ago, we're actually starting to see a lot of built to rent communities. And that's how we're solving a lot of the inventory problem. How do we do that, Robert and Russ? Actually, we have a 48 unit uh, townhome project right in Palm Bay, right on the Space Coast that we're just selling out right now. And what we do is we are the Amazon of real estate. We put our properties on our website. You can come in, tell us how did you hear about us? Just mark, you know, the real estate guys show and uh, we'll send you a contract within 24 hours that you sign up to, to receive that, that address. It's first come, first serve. So there's no fighting. There's no need to fight. If the address is available, it's going to be online for you to reserve. But what we have done is we have approached real estate very differently. Those are not uh, uh, homeowners that are going to be living on those properties. Those are only going to be tenant occupied and investor space. So what we have done is we created the HOAs and the associations with the investor in mind. We investors control the association or the, uh, or, or the HOA. We investors have the regulation that says there's not going to be any rental accepted in this whole community for less than Y. For example, 1750. The reason why is maybe Wagner needs to pay his mortgage. He doesn't have the money this month, but Robert and Russ are very well, you know, well, and they don't want to lower the rent. And if you lower the rent on one unit, you mess it up for everybody else. So we don't care how much you rent it for more than the minimum, but we wanted to keep the minimum very healthy for everybody else. Also reserves. Everybody knows that an HOA and a condo association reserves can really make it or break it, right? So we are actually controlling the reserves with the investor's eyes, meaning we don't have a lot of reserves more than what we have to have it. Um, common areas are very, very simple, yet elegant. Why? We want to keep the costs low. So inventory, we have close to 3,000 units in different stages of construction, permitting uh, a lot of the land, you know, some of them were already getting the, the horizontal done and the vertical has started. Some houses are being closed. We close about 50 to 60 homes every month. Um, so we have a lot of inventory coming up. Just stay tuned with the real estate guys. And we have a lot of great things coming up for you guys. Well, this is another really good point, Wagner. And that is that when you go to sell a property of any kind, you know, people are experiencing this multiple offer situation. But if I'm building a spec house, I have marketing time and expense. And then as a builder, let me ask you this, how many days from when you get your certificate of occupancy until the buyer takes their receipt of the property? How many days would you like that to be? So right now, that's one of the biggest challenges. We actually hold the hand of the buyer and we start working with the buyer 90 days before the certificate of occupancy is actually issued. We like to close on a property the day that we have the certificate of occupancy Bingo. or within the same week. Well, that's the point. See, if I build that spec house and I'm waiting for the market, even if it's multiple offers and I'm just back and forth, back and forth, all those days cost money. When you've got all your materials, all your labor's already expended, the land's been paid for and it's sitting there, that costs you money and that's where some of that profit margin has to go. In your situation, you know, investors, we don't have to close on Friday so we can move in over the weekend. Like we're willing to close when the property's ready. And so because of that, it's another reason why you don't have to make as much per deal because you're carefully watching this stuff. And, and you know, this idea of the HOA, anyone who's been part of an HOA knows that what normally happens is that no one ever attends the meetings, no one ever reads the, the letters. And then all of a sudden, when the few folks that have nothing to do and all day to do it in uh, put together the reserve study and go out for vote and say, hey, based on, you know, the numbers right now and what we have in reserves, we're going to have to raise the dues. Everyone votes no. Well, when the investors control it, when it's controlled by people who think like real estate investors instead of consumers that live in houses, it's a whole new ballgame. It is. And I also wanted to tell you that the reason why we rather sell houses to investors directly is because they close. 
they close, they close on time. They're well qualified. They have great jobs. They have already cash flowing properties coming in. So for a builder's perspective, I'd rather make less money on a house and know that I'm closing on that day than actually waiting an additional 30, 45, painting that, that, that wall pink or, you know, every wives of, of homeowners or architects, at least they think they are designers. <laughs> so they want to change the spec of the house. And, you know, it's better to work with investors. Another very important thing, Russ and, and, and Robert, that you guys have said is this is the biggest leverage against inflation, right? We're, we're having inflation. This is, it's, it's happening. Real estate is the enemy of inflation. If you need to leverage yourself up with 30 year fixed interest rates, mortgages, this is the only country in the world that will do it. Um, you just might as well do it right now because the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago, right? And if you haven't done 20 years ago, you better do it today. If not, you're going to be crying for the next 20 years saying, I wish I had done it. It's so true. Hey, you know, most of what we talked about so far, Wagner, actually applies to any market that makes sense. But I do want to spend a few moments talking about how strong your markets in Florida have been. We've been anxious to uh, find good inventory in Florida because there's no state income tax and it's very landlord friendly and the cost of living is great and all those things. But tell us some of the high notes on why you've selected this area and what, what makes Florida so strong. I believe the netting migration is absolutely amazing. Low property taxes is absolutely fantastic. No state income tax. We are very investor and, and corporate friendly states. So if you wanted to do business in Florida, it's very easy. We're a very affordable state compared to other states. So our cash flow is really strong. Our appreciation is absolutely unbelievable. And everybody's moving here. You know, as we said, uh, uh, Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk and Sir Richard Branson, we have the Bright Line, which is a train line that is going to be connecting. Disney to the Orlando International Airport to the Miami International Airport. And that trip that takes us about four hours is going to be cut down to a probably two, two and a half hours. Uh, and that's actually going to go through the east coast of the state, which is right on Palm Bay, the Space Coast, where we're building strongly. Also, we have the World Equestrian Center coming here, over a billion dollar development project. A lot of hospitals are expanding because of the demand. So Ocala Regional, for example, in Ocala, which is Northwest Florida, has the only one level one trauma center uh, in the whole area. So hospitals require doctors and nurses, great tenants, right? Uh, distribution center, we are everywhere. So from Amazon to Chewy to Napa, FedEx hubs, great tenants for us. A lot of the people that work for those companies. So the net immigration is number one. You know, business friendly is number two. I can give you a hundred reasons why you should come to Florida, but we're very lucky to be in this amazing state. And now we're really catching up. I was in California a couple of weeks ago and I saw houses in Malibu being sold for $115 million, right? It's, it's absolutely insane. Here, you can buy a 6,000 square feet house for about a million, a million and a half dollars, which in California will probably cost you $10 million. So we're very affordable, very high cash flows, New property is the way to go, in my opinion, and Florida is a place you should come. Do not invest where the sun doesn't shine. I tell everybody that. Well, we've covered a lot today, and uh, if you're driving or working out or something and it's not all sticking in your brain, Wagner's put together a really cool report where he outlines some of the market conditions as well as makes the case for builder rent. If you'd like to get a copy of that, all you have to do is send an email to B2R now, build to rent now. And he'll make the case why Built to Rent isn't only awesome, but it's awesome right now. Wagner, always great to talk to you. Thanks for your enthusiasm and for sharing your knowledge today. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, Russ. I really appreciate the opportunity. There's our friend Wagner in Alaska. More when we come back. You're tuned to the Real Estate Guys radio program. I'm your host, Robert Helms. Need help with your real estate investment portfolio? Check out the resources page at realestateguysradio.com. In uncertain times like this, it's great to know there are two things you can always count on. High demand for affordable single-family homes to live in and Terry Kerr's amazing Memphis team at Mid-South Home Buyers to find, fix, and manage the next addition to your recession-resistant real estate portfolio. The Memphis market is logistics and distribution dynamo with an economic engine that's essential to moving goods and critical supplies all over the United States. Quality rehab, proven profitable property management, affordable rents, and solid ROI make turnkey property investing through Terry's team a dream when it matters most. To learn more about Memphis and Mid South home buyers, send an email to Mid South at Real Estate Guys That's Mid South at Real Estate Guys 
If you want to learn how you could potentially increase your net worth by over a million dollars and quit your job in just a few short years, listen closely for the next 60 seconds. This is Brad Sumrock, and over the past 16 years, I've helped thousands of people invest profitably in real estate, but not just any type of real estate. I specialize in helping people syndicate large apartment buildings so that they can be business owners and investors. In today's competitive environment, it's even more important than ever to leverage an experienced mentor, invest in your education, and have a team of advisors that has established relationships nationwide. And so many people right now seem to be struggling to find deals and then get them funded, but yet some rock students are thriving in today's marketplace. We've purchased nearly 7,000 units and nearly one half billion in purchase volume over the past 12 months. And with the new Trump tax laws, apartment investors are positioned now better than ever before to pay even less in taxes. To find out more, send an email to apartmentsnow at realestateguysradio.com and you'll get my recent presentation called Why Apartments Now? That's apartmentsnow at realestateguysradio.com. Hi, this is Garrett Sutton, Rich Dad's advisor. Remember, equity happens, and you're listening to The Real Estate Guys. And welcome back to The Real Estate Guys radio program. Thanks for being here. You want to come out and check out The Real Estate Guys, don't you? We're going to be all over the globe as the summer continues uh, well into the fall. And if you'd like to find out where, just go to the website at realestateguysradio.com and check out the tab that says Events some of our events, some other folks' events, and places you might want to get together with other investors. Great hearing from Wagner in Alaska and getting an update not only on the Florida markets, but also the build-to-rent space. It is. I mean, again, you know, long-term listeners are going to know we've been talking about build-to-rent being kind of the hot niche for a long, long time. John Burns of John Burns Consulting has been talking about it. We have been uh, turning over rocks, looking for great build-to-rent people that we can talk with who understand their market. Uh, and what I especially appreciate about Wagner is he's not selling to the hedge funds. He's not selling to the Blackstones of the world. He's not interested in feeding the inventory to Wall Street, which is effectively competing with Main Street for that inventory. And in our syndication program, we've been talking forever about the mission of Main Street investing in Main Street. You know, then you just have to kind of get into the business model and you covered some of it, but I think it's worth hitting again just to really understand, uh, you know, the quick nickel versus the long dime. That only works when you have volume. And, and so you have to be able to do volume. So he sells volume. He's looking for outlets uh, where there's an audience like ours that people are going to be able to come in. He's saying, look, I built a product. I've engineered it. I have picked a market. I've built an HOA. I have a whole structure and a support team to allow you to leverage your own finances and portfolio and due diligence expense uh, to be able to you know, buy five, six, seven, eight, ten houses, however many you can fit into your portfolio and have it all make sense. And the other thing that I think is really important. We hear this all the time because this happened after 2008. The idea of buying below replacement cost. In 2008, it was because the prices crashed and the cost to build remained more or less fixed. In other words, the cost to build was greater. In other words, you could you, you could buy existing inventory for less than the replacement cost. Well, and it was less about the building and what it cost to build and more about the fact that you had a lot of don't wanters selling product. Exactly. Exactly. Today, we have a similar circumstance, but it's different um, because we're watching the cost go up. So you say, well, how can a new builder do that? Well, the idea is that building for replacement cost, to build below replacement cost, you have to value engineer it so that you take cost out of building the product. You have to organize it in such a way from a cash flow perspective. And you touched on this, and it was a brilliant point, Robert, that by focusing on being able to close as soon as that CO, that certificate of occupancy is ready to go, meaning they don't have any carrying costs and they pull that out. And so a smart entrepreneur lowers their costs to do so they can offer the market a better product at a better price point going back to quick nickel over a long dime and the idea that it only works with volume. 
And so that just checks a lot of boxes. The reason we're so excited to do this show is because we've got a great market, a great submarket. We've got available inventory product that's engineered to make sense, brand new, deals with the CapEx problem, and then building communities that are going to be landlord friendly through the HOA, through the rent rules, uh, and just the support. Because if you've ever owned a rental property in an owner-occupied neighborhood, you're like the pariah. You're like the person nobody likes because you, you're bringing in a tenant class. But this is... The these are communities built for tenants. And so it just, it just checks so many boxes. Super excited about it. And Wagner's a great guy to work with. And so I'm really glad that we were able to get this show done. Well, and there's even another nuance there, which is keep in mind when they bought the land. Not right now, but years ago, yeah, months ago. It depends on the situation. And then they buy in bulk. So their cost per fill in the blank is going to be less than it is if you went to Home Depot or Lowe's and tried to buy it yourself. So you could certainly go find a lot in a great Florida market and hire a builder and go build something, but you're not going to have all of these economies and efficiencies and experience to be able to bring in a rent-ready product. That's why we like the whole build-to-rent idea. It's when a builder focuses on creating something a tenant will love, live in for a long time, and pay for. And as real estate investors, we're all about that. If you want Wagner's report, just send an email to B2R, build to rent, B, the number two, R, now at realestateguysradio.com and you'll get that report. Better yet, come on out to the Secrets of Successful Syndication in September and you can meet Wagner. He's going to be there. We'll have a chance for you to interact with him at the breaks and in the evenings and that kind of stuff so you can pick his brain about what's working, what's not. He's not just in Ocala. He's in a lot of different marketplaces and he's got multifamily inventory. If any of that sounds interesting or if you just want to learn more about the syndication business, then come on out to the Secrets of Successful Syndication. You can get all the details on our website at realestateguysradio.com under events. Yeah, you know, I, I started out my real estate uh, interest with late night TV and all about no money down. I think a lot of people do that. And the, the holy grail of real estate investing is how do you do this with OPM? And it starts out with, hey, I can get no money down, get the owner to carry back. I can go get a loan or an assumable loan. But at the end of the day, the best way to do real estate, mass scale, big numbers where all of the time and effort, you can turn it into a business using OPM, other people's money, is syndication. There are a lot of high net worth people, high earning people that have tax problems, that have investment problems, that on a risk adjusted basis are looking for decent returns. There's a reason all of these hedge funds are moving into single family housing right now. Now. They can see the writing on the wall. They can't get what they need out of the paper asset side of the world. So I'm very thankful guys like Wagner are out there kind of making sure inventory is available to Main Street USA. But syndication is, is learning how to do that. How do you go out and put yourself in a business situation where your product or service is actually uh, helping people put their money to work in investments? If you're going to do the work of investing in your own account, then all you're doing is leveraging that over helping other people who don't have the time or the inclination to do it themselves. And there's a big, big, big market out there for it. So uh, we've had great success. We've seen people have great success in syndication. We typically have 200, 250 people at every event. We do this twice a year. It's uh, just a ton of fun. No secrets of successful syndication event is the same. We always mix up the faculty. The markets change. The messages change. Uh, although we always cover the fundamentals and the basics. But if it's something you are even remotely interested in, come check it out. It's relatively inexpensive expensive. It's a ton of fun. It's always fun when you come to a real estate guys event and you get to meet cool people like Wagner and Dave Zook and, uh, you know, who's uh, kind of our poster child for successful syndication. Well over 300, probably $350 million in equity raised so far. Uh, and a lot of people that are doing, you know, 10, 20 million and so on. So uh, if they can do it, you can do it too. Come find out Secrets of Successful Syndication in September. If you want more information, send an email to syndication at realestateguysradio.com. We'll get you all the details. So many different ways to invest in real estate. When you buy something brand new, there's less headache and tenants love it and they stay longer. Big thanks to Wagner and Alasco for sharing his ideas and market with us today. We've got another great show next week. Until then, go out and make some equity happen. This episode of the Real Estate Guys Radio Show is brought to you by Paradigm Life. Powerful cash management strategies using life insurance. Learn more at beyourbank.com. Mid South Home Buyers, low cost, turnkey cash flow properties in Memphis, Tennessee. 
Corporate Direct, asset protection strategies for real estate investors from attorney and rich dad advisor Garrett Sutton. Find these and other great companies under the resources tab at realestateguysradio.com. To learn how you can expose your product or service to the Real Estate Guys audience, call 888-489-7723, extension 4. That's 888-489-7723, extension 4. Or use the feedback page at realestateguysradio.com. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week right here on the Real Estate Guys Radio Show.